right, Rage Nation, we are at it again. We're going to go ahead and take a look at a little unboxing. And not only that, we'll look at some of the tactics that you might use in this box. Uh, yeah, got a little uh, got a little title box here. So I believe this was one of the February releases from Weird. So you can see that this is one of the title boxes. If you haven't seen them yet, this is generally what they look like. So you can see it tells you what factions uh, you can use these models for. It comes with two masters and then the shared enforcer that you can use with those masters. So this one's called Seeking the Blade. So you have Yan Lo from the uh, Ten Thunders, but he's also a resurrectionist. And then we also have the Victorias. Uh, this one I'm definitely interested in because they are uh, no longer separate models. Apparently they have, uh, you know, Wonder Twin powers activated to be on the same 50 mil base. So I'm going to definitely look at later in this video what the changes and benefits might be when comparing them being one model with three APs as opposed to two models with six APs. So we'll take a look at that. And then you can see this is the enforcer that they have, uh, Kenshiro, the technician. So we'll take a look at that model as well. But first, I always want to look at what these look like straight out of the box, quality, and what you get. So looking at this box, we'll go ahead and get the plastics out. Okay, somebody fill out. So right away, we got a few different things. So obviously you're gonna have the cards. We'll look at those in more detail here in a minute. Yeah, what looks like a 50 millimeter base. Uh, who is on the 40 mil? Is that Yan Lo? Or is Yan Lo on a 13 shift? I'm going to get the cards in a minute. So obviously the Victorias are on the 50. Kenishiro is on 30. There's two upgrades, so that's interesting. Um, okay, Yan Lo's on a 40. I didn't even know that this box came with upgrades. There's a reliquary upgrade for Kenishiro, and then there's a reliquary upgrade apparently for Yonko, so that's definitely interesting. All right, so let's see who this little person is first. It's probably Kenishiro. It is, so looking at Kenishiro's model, looks pretty easy to put together. No ridiculous small pieces, some cloaks. Um, if you like painting these kind of robes, that you see a lot in the Ten Thunders. This will be a cool model to paint. I can dig that. So that's an easy one to put together. We'll look at the cards, see if Kenshiro is even worth uh, worth bringing. Um, I've been playing more Outcast, so I'm definitely going to be talking more about the Outcast half of this. I'll give my opinion on Yan Lo, um, but we'll look at this first. So these... <laughs> This big sprue down here, this is for the Victorias. This big sprue up here is for Yan Lo. So looking at the Vix, I'm gonna put this together and show you it once I'm completed. But you can see that the Vix bodies are right here. And we also got them over here. There's some little hair pieces dancing around up here. This one's gonna be interesting to put together. You got some flimsy swords too. Definitely interested to see how this works around the base with the kind of flailing swords. So we'll see what that one looks like. Uh, if you look back at the Hoffman one I did, I did the Hoffman uh, box and I assembled Hoffman and I painted Hoffman. You'll see the lightning bolts kind of, I had similar questions. So we'll see how that pans out. And then we have Yang Lo. So let's go back to the side. Yan Lo's model actually looks pretty sweet. He has the smoke. He has a base insert that. Though I'm not sure what that what that looks like or what that symbol is or what it represents. But you can see all the smoke. He also has like a parasail and like a, a hat. So this this model, this Yan Lo model is actually pretty cool. I can dig this one. I'm gonna enjoy painting that. I know it's not an outcast, but I definitely will paint it up and hopefully Chris can use it in uh, either 10 Thunders or probably Risers. Super cool models. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the cards and we'll see what we think of them. Uh, definitely more details on the VIX 
and Kenshiro, just because those are the two that I will be interested in playing in. Uh, maybe sometime down the line I'll try Yamlo for 10 Thunders. Uh, I'm not a Rezzer player. I'm never going to play Rezzer, so we'll see how that works. But the, generally speaking, plastic's really good quality. Uh, we'll go over the cards here, but first I want to show you what this looks like with these assembled models. All right, so we got these models finally put together. Uh, <laughs> I'll talk about each one as I, as I go through them. I'll also put up the instructions on assembly that I got from Weird's website, and I'll include the links. So those of you trying to assemble these models will uh, yeah, have some reference. I'm gonna start off with the VIX first. So the VIX model, honestly, I thought it was gonna be harder to put this together than it was. I'd say the hardest part of this model was actually just figuring out which legs went with which torso. But once you looked at the art and the instructions, it actually pretty easy to put together. So I was actually pretty happy with how easy this is to put together. And I'm actually pretty happy with the durability of this. They did a good job of making multiple anchor points for the model. Um, you can see that the base of the swirl here, it uses the ankle of the one on the ground. So that helps basically keep the model together. And you can also see that the flying Vic has two anchor points with the sword and the foot onto the swoop. So the model itself is actually gonna do a really good job of holding together. The only thing you're gonna wanna do is I would probably magnetize this and put it on some kind of rack because I can already see if I was gonna put this in foam, these bits are gonna get caught a bunch of times and they're pretty sturdy. Also the fingers of the VIX can get caught on foam and that's where I see this model possibly breaking. Um, so these swoops might eventually break. I know I'm gonna put it flat in a, uh, in a foam case. I'm not gonna have it laying down where it's gonna get caught. So I have custom foam that I can cut out. But honestly, this is a lot easier to put together than I thought. It, the, probably the hardest part, honestly, putting it together was the tabards, because um, they kind of look a little similar. And then in the image, this one didn't have a lot of, it wasn't visually great showing um, how to assemble it. But all in all, this model is really good looking. I'm pretty impressed with it. I think it's gonna look really good on the table once it's painted up. Definitely a model I'm looking forward to painting, and I will play it because, as I'll talk about when we look at the cards, I think this model has some interesting, uh, interesting things it can do. Um, I'll talk about the boy Yanlo last. Um, so this is Kenshiro. So this model was really easy to put together. Um, it came mostly as a core. One thing I will show. You can see that these models have decent mold lines. Um, you can go through and clean those up though. They're honestly not too bad. They're all on a seam where you pretty much would expect them. Um, you don't have any like going straight down their face or anything. Um, pretty easy to put together though. Really just a couple, I'd say this model, I don't know, it had like just maybe six, seven pieces. It was pretty easy. Um, so easiest model to put together for sure. Now, all these models were pretty easy to put together. Um, Yan Lo has a bad rep in Malifo, uh, mostly his beard, but you can see his beard uh, is actually attached, so you don't have to worry about losing that. This model did get a little challenging, and it does look like a lot going on here. You look at it and be like, oh my god, this one's going to be so hard to put together. It actually wasn't too bad. So this little parasail was like three pieces. Um, so these triangles go together. You don't have to glue all these stupid little things. They're already there, perfect. Um, the smoke, perfect, just two pieces. So you can see it. And from earlier in the video, you can see it. Uh, the main body of Yan Lo is built into the smoke. Now, the part where I started having troubles were not the robes or anything else. It was his head and his arm with this hand that you can see is missing. So, <laughs> so this is, the head's good, it, it has two anchor points, but it's for some reason the collar and his head are two separate pieces, which made it kind of cumbersome putting it together. 
Um, I actually lost the hand. So the hand itself actually glues into this robe and the hand is pretty tiny. Uh, I lost it on my carpet and I'm not sure where it is. So this Jan Lowe model is going to be handless. Um, it's in his robe, you can't see it. <laughs> um, that's my only complaint, the stupid little hand went blue and I lost it, it got stuck on my finger. Now I have fat sausage fingers and now I don't know where it is in the carpet. If I find it when I'm vacuuming, great. If not, then he just has no hand. Um, beautiful models though. Uh, this one and the Vix are super dynamic models. I mean, it's gonna look beautiful on the table. So these two models, I'm really excited. I don't play Yon Low, but I'm gonna paint it up and maybe Chris will play it um, as he looks into different factions. So let's go ahead and take a look at the cards. So I just wanted to show quick pictures of the models just so you can kind of see what they look like once they're painted up. Uh, the Vicks are the only ones I painted. I haven't gotten the Yon Lo and the other model yet, but let's talk about the cards. <clears throat> so I have now played two games, actually technically three games with the Vix, uh, Twin Blade. So the Vix are, <laughs> this version is definitely pretty cool. It has some nasty little tricks that you can use. Uh, and it's a little more durable. It's still, it's pretty much like mercenary. It can cause, it can get caught in some bad situations. So just keep that in mind that the VIX are just a fragile keyword. So this one is move six. So that's really great because increased threat. Um, everything in the keyword has battle tempo. So at the start phase, you get to push two inches in any direction. Combat finesse is huge on this model. So with the VIX, twin blades, they can basically, if you try to attack them with a melee, you can't cheat. So it, it really is a good defensive trick uh, that helps them keep alive a little bit longer. But uh, the guns still can get them, even though you reduce damage by two. Uh, willpower range attacks are really gonna hurt this model a lot. But where I've been getting a lot of use out of this model is through diving charge because you can charge in and out of combat ignoring models terrain if you haven't played a master with diving charge yet it's superb and movement six with a beater really good if we look at the back of the card though that's where most of the value i feel is um, not just with the whirlwind of blades attack which has a built-in positive which is super good uh, makes her really good at killing those kind of serene continents, manipulative models that are hard for some people to kill. Really easy for her. She has crit strike, sweeping strike. Um, I really like the crit strike for, you know, a cool uh, five, six, eight damage. That's, that's always good. So just straight up killer. But I will say I have, especially turns one and two, really fell in love with combat maneuvers. So I have used this to send the Midnight Stalker on my opponent's side of the board turn one. I have used it to send Taylor into killing something turn one. So it's just, it's really cool because what ends up happening is as long as it's a size two or smaller, you can place it anywhere within six of the VIX. So it's a 50 mil base. So you're placing it from six. This is huge movement. So... I've literally, and you're going to see a picture of the result of this, but literally sent ta a fast tailor with focus into my opponent's deployment zone, pretty much. Uh, it, it was just, it's nasty. Um, you can get any beater there. The new Barbaros is a great target for this. Uh, you can also do this with other beat sticks. So it's just, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and you have swift action, so you can take it twice for just once. So... I literally, last game I played, I did combat maneuvers onto Barbaros. I got a swift action trigger to then do it again onto, um, onto Taylor. So placing within six of her, really good. You can do this to your enemy and it can do some damage. Uh, so that's not nothing. That's worth kind of keeping in the back of your mind. Uh, especially if you get some hazardous terrain, you can place them in there. Do three ignoring armor if they fail the defense duel. Treasure Seeker is pretty good. You can drop a scheme, and if you discard a card, you can give somebody focus. That's how I set that up with Taylor. I did Treasure Seeker, drop the um, discarded card for focus. 
definitely good. Uh, the trigger is okay. I, I haven't haven't messed with it too much, but claim the bounty is good. You can remove markers, scheme markers to draw cards off your discard pile. And then finally, the one that I get the most use out of once you dive in with Diving Charge, do some damage with your Roll into Blades. You can then put up 1,000 cuts as your bonus action. So now whatever you're engaged with, if they try to retaliate, they're gonna take damage each time they do an action. So that 1,000 cuts is a ton of fun. Uh, not for your opponent, but for you. So my general impression from this model is just really solid. Uh, it can be a really good positioning master with quick combat maneuver. It can switch into beat stick mode and go kill stuff. Uh, I mean, I killed Bonasuva. Uh, I then dove into uh, Sandeep, so it really has a couple modes that you can take on this. Uh, really surprisingly decent into symbols. I don't know if it's going to do better than Terra, but it's, it was fun. So definitely give this version a try. Uh, the Vix are always fun, but this version of the Vix with Twin Blades is super fun. I didn't think the 3 AP would be worth switching out your 6 AP, but I think this is more durable for what it's worth being a Vic. Uh, it can put out a ton of damage, especially when you get that crit strike, and the combat maneuvers really can get some of your beaters into a really strong position. So. Definitely give this model a try. This one looks awesome on the table and it's a lot of fun to play. Uh, you do got to be careful though because it can definitely be put into some bad situations where you, you, can, you can die. I mean, I had to put a vitality potion and kill models to heal up and just kind of keep going, but definitely got close to death a few times. So check this out. We're going to look at our next model out of this box and see what, uh, see what Yan Lo does. So if we take a look at him, Yan Lo, of course, can play for the Rezzers. He's also a 10 Thunders master. So Yan Lo, this version is definitely different. We'll check out the upgrade here in a minute because if you haven't seen Yan Lo before, Yan Lo puts out these upgrades and it, uh, it, they're pretty good, but we'll look at the upgrades here in a minute. So Yan Lo's stats are base. It's not like the other one where they get better over time. Uh, the Ancient Anchor actually is pretty cool. Not only do you put the uh, upgrade out, but you can also place, uh, place Yan Lo within three of it. So uh, it's, it's pretty good. Clear the path is good too. You can remove uh, up to two markers and draw a card for each one. So drawing two at the end of your turn, because think about how many uh, markers there are in this GG2. It's it's pretty ridiculous. He's in Corporal, which is cool. Uh, lingering Voice, pretty sick. The fact that if you do this on, which most of the time you're going to do it onto your friendlies, you just get a built-in mask and tome if they have an upgrade on them. A reliquary upgrade, I should say. So, this Yan Lo is kind of interesting. I, I can kind of dig it. Um, Twist Reality has its spots because you can ignore armor and Corporal. So that's, that's a good attack. That's never a bad thing. Um, I think the, obviously the big thing on his card is he's an Obey Master. So we yet again have another Obey. <clears throat> so the Obey on him though has a cool built in, if you look at the front of his card, to give a focus to a, uh, to, um, Spirit Guide, so non-ancestor, so that means all retainer models. Essentially, you'll get Focus 1, so that's pretty sweet. Final Wishes, uh, this is definitely an interesting ability. You can look at the top five cards of your Fate deck and discard any number of non-Joker cards, placing the rest back in any order. So it kind of lets you get rid of some of the crap cards, lets you kind of put them in the order that you want. If you need a mask, uh, you can put up maybe a high mask that you find in there. Uh, a couple cool triggers in there. Um, I can definitely see it being useful, and I'm actually becoming a pretty big fan of Weary Road. The fact that you can uh, move a model, drop a scheme marker, and base contact with it has come into a very use. It's been very useful for me, um, especially playing with the Hodgepodge Emissary as Weary Road. 
a lot of models, a lot of schemes require a scheme marker and then you can go kill it or you can get your research mission or you can, you know, there's detonate charges, whatever. So that's a great ability. Now I'm not a Yan Lo player, so I'm not sure how, I guess how this compares to the other one. Uh, just looking at this version though, it, it has some legs. I mean, anytime you can get obeys with also handing out focus, uh, with built-in suits for your models with upgrades. Uh, we'll see if the upgrade's pretty good. We'll look at that here in a minute. But, uh, and then has a twist reality gun to deal with some armor and some incorporate. This is a pretty good tech piece. Uh, something I've been finding with a lot of Obey Masters is they usually seem to want to bring like elite, maybe even out of keyword models. I don't think this Obey Master wants to do that. If you look at a lot of the Obey and abilities on this card, they still want the retainers. They still want the ancestor keyword uh, because if you don't bring those, then you're losing half of the shtick, right? You're losing the built-ins. You're losing the spirit guide. You're losing the um, guard reliquary trigger. So this is just something that um, I think this Obey Master you're gonna stay mostly in keyword. Uh, I did just notice when I was eyeballing the uh, the back of the card with Twist Reality, it has a crow trigger for stun. So, so I'm telling you, stun's nasty. If uh, if you're a crew or a keyword that really depends on your uh, your triggers, that's no no bueno, no good. So I'm a fan of Yon Low. I could if. If I was in either of these two factions, I'd definitely give them a try. Um, I'm gonna paint it up and let's see if we can get Chris to uh, to play it. But it, it's a cool model, does some really cool things. Uh, I'm, I guess I'm gonna try some Obey out. I got the new Hamlin coming in this month and we'll see if I can stomach Obeying stuff. Just, I don't know. Obey Masters can be so, I don't know, I just, doing an action to have another model do an action is just i would rather my master do cool things and this this yan lo does some cool things on top of the obey so definitely has a lot of options i'm, I'm a fan so excited to see this see this on the table now that we have the model hopefully people will start bringing it to uh to a lot of these tournaments coming out so let's see what his upgrade does yan lo's crew hands out a lot of these reliquary upgrades and he has one for the box that uh, he comes in with for the spirit walker so as you can see with the upgrade the upgrade basically has a lot of good abilities um, it can't be put on yon low but it has laugh off has released the soul which means you can give it to a minion you can pass it but then guarding spirit where basically the target may take a non-bonus action targeting model within three in line of sight of itself pretty good then we have Kenshiro. Kenshiro is the enforcer that comes with these two. So I don't know where his place is. Um, he has some cute things. Combat tactics is kind of cute. Um, basically, it lets you cheat off of basically what you discard one of these tokens. These uh, what are they called? The ta tactics tokens. You get two at the start phase. And when you would cheat, you can discard one of these tokens to cheat fate with the top card of the fate deck. So it's kind of like a Bayou cheating kind of thing. Uh, Somer used to have it really broken where, you know, you could cheat off the top if you were within X of uh, this model. Uh, this is just twice per turn, so I guess it's more balanced. Fleet of Foot is okay. Uh, whenever you would push as a friendly mercenary or retainer, uh, you can move that distance instead. So I guess instead of charging in a straight line, I could do a U-turn, I guess. I mean, I don't know how useful that would be. I'd have to put him on the table to see if it was worth it. Uh, he's in Corporal Demise. He puts his uh, upgrade out, which is sure, whatever. So overall, not too impressed with the front of the card. Uh, let's take a look at the back of the card and see what else we got going on here. So... Reverse momentum, one inch melee, okay, you can move the target up to three, sure, I guess. Um, maybe in uh, the Vix hazardous terrain, that could be a big deal, you know, doing extra damage. 
that would become then uh I mean it has coordinated attack so that's not nothing I actually have to get better at that I've had models with coordinated attack before and I don't ever set it up so that's something where I think I could uh, probably do that um, plus two damage and damage from this action ignores armor and corporal I mean that's not terrible so that kind of that could be something uh, master tactician uh, let's see here okay discard random cards I've seen that before with uh, what was that Hinamatsu? No, not Hinamatsu. It's that keyword though. It's the one with uh, Yoko. I think they have that ability. Uh, Seeking the Blade. This one's kind of cool. So this one, whenever you would be, whenever you would successfully do an, a melee attack, you can look at the top two cards of the Fate deck. If either is a Joker, reveal the card and draw it. Then place any remaining cards back in the Fate deck in the same order. So basically, this lets you. Be like, okay, my Vicks are going. Okay, I do damage. Oh, crap, there's a Black Joker on the next. Let's draw that. So, um, I guess. I don't know how often that'll come up. Plus, you would have to activate Kenshiro first. I would probably almost rather that be on the front of the card. Uh, just as a static ability, I don't like setting up Kenshiro first. Um, yeah, I don't know how well that would work out. And New Horizons, good. Um... I mean, placing ski markers is fine. The problem I've found with the Vix is there's not a ton of ways to put out a crap ton of ski markers. So that one can be tough sometimes because um, they like the Vix like to use their ski markers. Um, the Twin Blades model can use them. Uh, you have the Student of Conflict, which is awesome, by the way. I didn't mention that on her card, but the Student of Conflict is awesome because you can give a model fast. Uh, but you got to remove a ski marker. So I don't see that ability being useful unless you're moving a ski marker to do the thing. Then that could work. So I'm going to put Kenshiro on the table eventually. Uh, yeah, I just I don't know if this does anything for the Vix, and I don't honestly know if it does much for the, uh, for the Yon Low crew. So I think we'll have to see if this upgrade does anything. Uh, because Kenshiro does have an upgrade that he hands out when he dies. So we'll see see what this does here with, uh, with this reliquary. He only has seven in Corporal, seven boxes, and he's in Corporal, so... <clears throat> we'll, see, we'll see how he does. But looking at his upgrade, you can see that this one's kind of meh. I mean, the combat tactics, so you're giving out those tokens again, and you can attach it. Uh, clear the path, unaffected by severe, sure. So, really cool box though. I'm really excited to give this all a try. Really excited to put them on the table. Really excited to paint them. Uh, I, like I said, I do have the Vix painted. I have used them a few times now. And they're a ton of fun to play. Uh, I'm going to show you a list that I've actually been playing with them. So you can see, you get the student conflict with the Vix. Been bringing Taylor, the Hodgepodge, a Prospector, Vanessa, uh, I didn't bring Rusty Alice. I don't know why she's in there, but actually Rusty Alice would be okay. Um, and Big Jake's always been fun. So you can really bring some interesting pieces. Uh, you can see Taylor there killing Karis. Chris was not happy. But yeah, let us know what you think. Do you like this new Vix? Do you like the new Yon Lo? Uh, what the hell does Kenshiro do? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you all next time. Flip cards, flip tables. Peace.